So, hello everybody. I hope you guys are doing absolutely amazing. And uh, this right here, of course, is a very rare fruit here in the U.S. Though, from what I can gather, it's fairly common in the rest of, you know, South America, Mexico. But it's kind of, you know, confusing. Can't learn everything from Google, guys. And it's hard to find really good information on these. The only thing you can really find is that in tropical areas, it's a nuisance plant, it's a weed, and blah, blah, blah. You know, basically, same as here in the U.S., it means it grows really easily, and it produces great and large amounts of food. <laughs> right. Though, apparently, if you go and look for any information on the fruit, people really give it a bad rap from what I can gather again. And that's a shame because I think it tastes really great. You know, it's uh, obviously the, the interesting thing about these is the fruit. You know, the snake fruit, the gummy worm fruit. And um, so, yeah, well, nice little intro there. The Cecropia, you know. Snake fruit, it's got a bunch of other names in Latin America and throughout the world. And, uh, yeah, it apparently grows very easily everywhere else in the world, <laughs> except the U.S., which here in the U.S., it's extremely, extremely rare. And that probably has to do with the fact that pretty much the only way to propagate it is through air layering. You know, there are male and female plants. The females, of course, get these amazing-looking fruits. And the males don't. But they do set fruit without a male plant. You know, they don't need any pollination to set the delicious fruits. Look at, there's one where the sheath just came off the flower spikes. And there's a flower spike right there. Just now starting to open up, as you can see. So, this is a fairly large air-layered plant here. It's about ooh, five feet tall. And you can see she's just starting to branch right there for me. She grew a branch. I've actually grown this plant for quite a few years. And um, I didn't realize how rare they actually were, you know. I picked one up for quite a bit of money. <laughs> this plant, actually. I only got it about a foot tall. And very expensive. And um, I think very much worth it. Here in Florida, they, they love the heat. They love the sun, they love the rain. So they are pretty much growing year round except when they don't have all of those things, which is pretty much just our winter. So other than that, they are always fruiting, they're always pushing out some new leaves. Look at that beautiful new leaf there. And these get huge leaves. I have a friend not too far from me with one in the ground and they easily, in the ground, if they're potted and not well taken care of or in a poor spot they don't grow very fast and they don't need to grow fast but if they're in a really rich area and you're really watering them and feeding them these are super fast growing plants that can put on probably easily five six seven eight plus feet a year and uh, grow very fast with massive leaves i think the leaves can get two three feet wide and they're palmate. Can you see that? Nice palmate kind of leaf. I think they use them as umbrellas in the jungles. But they don't need that nutrition. They're actually very poor soil tolerant. And actually fruit better when they're in a poor soil, you know, kind of neglected area. Because they're not putting on much growth. They're focusing that on putting leaves and, of course, the flower spikes. So if they've got a lot of nitrogen, just like some plants, they're putting that towards leaf growth and stock growth instead of putting it towards flowering. So you don't want to really take care of them too much. This is a plant that you want to give some neglect to so you get to eat those delicious, delicious fruits. And they're called snake fruits because you see when they, they open up, and she's staked here because this, this was an air layer and it's a fairly thick one. And uh, she stakes so she didn't fall over on me. But you can see they start, the sheath opens up, and the flower spikes are standing. And normally, you know, if there was male pollen floating in the air, those every little bump there is a flower. 
so they've got thousands of flowers on each spike but they're not pollinated they still they just grow they open up that one's actually open right there if you can i don't know if you can focus in on that if you can see it and the little minute flowers are open and each one of those will form into like a little jelly sack with a seed in it and that forms the long fruits you know and then as they mature they start hanging down and they grow longer and longer and on a nice big healthy mature plant those can get up to a foot long and when they're ripe they hang down kind of like jelly fingers <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool and they turn like a gray green blue white color really interesting color and they get wrinkly the uh, flesh starts separating from like the inner core and it starts getting a little wrinkly and it gets all that gray green color looks like like dead man fingers literally yeah and anyway the number varies there's two four six on there that one's got eight you know some only have four three but just depends on how big the flower spike is anyway you tell when they're ripe because the the jelly like flesh separates from the core and gets nice and wrinkly so you just pick the whole thing Boop, and you just pick the whole thing if they're all ripe or you just break one off and it's the core slides out and it holds together really well and you just eat it and it's really really delicious in my my opinion some people say they don't have any flavor some people they're nasty i don't know people don't know what they're talking about they are really good tasting if you ask me um they're kind of like a strawberry without any of the acid so it's got a really unique flavor to it and they're really productive. Like I said, they flower throughout the year. And if you've got them in a pot in a greenhouse, they will just keep pumping out the flower spikes for you and the fruit. So super awesome. Uh, once these fruits ripen, these are my first fruits for the year. Uh, I will make a video and you know give you a little more in-depth look on the ripe fruit and everything. But I normally get, you know, we're uh, in May here, the beginning of May. I normally get probably about off this plant last year I think uh 30 flower spikes and then x amount of fingers and they fruit you know really well so you know pretty productive plants which is interesting because as productive as they are and how much fruit they produce where they're native you know south america tropical south america they're not really eaten apparently i don't know People, like I said, view them as weeds, which is a shame because they're tasty and they, they grow so easily down there. But a little more work here in the U.S., you know, they're not naturalized. They don't like the cold. So either put them in a protected spot or keep them in a pot. Either way, they do very well in pots. They don't need much care. Just keep them moist and give them full sun and heat. That is basically it. You know, they like well-draining soil, though. They don't like being wet. Moist, but not wet, you know? And, like I said, there you go. They will give you those delicious, beautiful, I think they're pretty, flower spikes. They'll turn into fruit and beautiful leaves. And there are medicinal things about this plant. You know, the leaves, you know, you chop them up, make tea out of them. I won't get into that, but you can use them medicinally. And anyway, like I said, I'm just going to call this Cecropia. You know, any other name attached to it is, is hard to suss out. Looking on the internet, clearly there's different species because the pictures look different. And actually, you know, you can see this plant here. Beautiful leaves and everything. It's hard to find an exact match with a name that actually looks like the plant that I have. You know, it's not very easy to find well, it looks like it so i'm not 100 percent sure what the full name for these guys actually happens to be all i know is that it's edible and the fruit tastes good and i'm guessing if you find another plant that looks similar to this and has fruit spikes like this then they're probably edible you know don't take my word for it but you know if it's a cecropia looks similar to this gets the fruit spikes if you take a bite out of it and it ain't burning the crap out of your mouth and you ain't dead the next day, and it tastes decent, it's probably edible. <laughs> so there's just a quick video, you guys, on a, a really awesome, very unique fruit tree that I grow. The uh, snake fruit or gummy worm fruit, the cecropia. 
And I guess you can call this if you want full name, Cecropia palata, I believe, is one of the names. That's reported to be the edible, you know, more common one. Though they're not very common at all here in the U.S. They're actually very, very hard to come by and pretty expensive, you know, for a little tiny, tiny air layer smaller than this branch here. You can easily pay three, four hundred bucks, let alone a you know four five foot air layered branch tree you could probably find one for eight hundred nine hundred dollars yeah pretty pretty expensive plants but you know if you're a crazy plant freak geek <laughs> and you want to try some awesome unique fruit definitely worth it in my opinion so love you guys grow food sometimes that involves growing some weird you know long blue gray jelly like fruits that happen to taste pretty good you know you just you like suck it off the core and slurp up this strawberry like flavored fruity sweet jelly you know <laughs> rotten flesh looking thing i don't know what else to tell you it tastes good you know put in your smoothies put in your fruit salad oh yeah Cut it up, put it on your pancakes, put it in your fruit tacos, you know, and uh, have at it, guys. See you later. Love you. Grow food. I do sell air layers of these when I have them or when I get air layers from my friend who, would, who you know, he doesn't live far from me. I sell him for him, and uh, they tend to be large ones, uh, three, four, five feet plus air layers uh if i have any you know email me if you're interested but they're not cheap just so you know and i don't ship them you'd have to be here in florida to pick it up so you know maybe i'll get hold of him see if he has any large plants available something like mine here possibly uh probably three four feet tall but again not cheap just saying you know some people some people look at me like bat shit fucking crazy i'm not paying that price sorry for swearing guys you know actually i've had some of you accuse me of prices that i put on things <laughs> guys stuff ain't cheap and i'll tell you what this tree alone right here bought you know three years ago cost me 400 bucks okay so trust me you know it ain't easy hunting down the rare fruits just saying and it ain't cheap getting them to grow and then you know time and effort into them you know don't hate because you know i try to recoup some of that much <laughs> just saying <laughs> takes time and effort guys to get that delicious that you ain't getting nowhere else right <laughs> see you later this video is long enough none of you have even watched it this long that's all right i still love you guys and uh like i said grow food the world is getting absolutely freaking insane really insane so get those fruit trees, those rare ones. Well, you can, especially ones like this baby that you can stick in a corner, stick in a greenhouse, stick in a pot and still get awesome fruits off of it. Can't beat that. Can't beat that. Snake fruit, gummy worm fruit. Look it up if you want. Mmm, delicious. Those are going to be tasty. And they ripen pretty quick from open flower you know case like that just starting to open up to you know flower spike to flowering flower spike to hanging down ripening fruit getting thick and taste they get about as big as a pinky and you know, not pinky pointer there and they get all wrinkly and really tasty looking <laughs> rotten flesh look <laughs> they taste good <laughs> you know but uh they take about a, about a month to ripen up from flower to that a month and a half if it's really warm and they're really happy, yeah, about three weeks, four weeks. Nice, fast, delicious fruits. Yep. See you later. I think I'm going to cut the top off this, like right there. Or air layer this top. And hopefully the rest of the trunk here. Because there are some, like, little buds, like right there. I'm hoping maybe if I, like, air layered it, like, super close, like right there. That, uh... I could get all these buds to open up and get this to branch. That'd be interesting. Mm, something like that. 
But yeah, look up the medicinal aspects of these two and look at the underneath those leaves. Gorgeous gray green. That's actually the kind of the color of the fruit turns. Though not to really a shiny, kind of like moist, rotten flesh look. That's kind of the color it turns. <laughs> yeah. But it tastes better than it looks, I swear. Kind of looks like that, like you know, something that's rotten and gets that glean on it, you know. And it's that blue, green, gray color. <laughs> but then it tastes like, you know, non-acidic, fruity, strawberry, berry, jelly yeah really interesting i love it i just came out here in the ripe and i literally just picked the thing and just slurp it off the stem they don't make it inside <laughs> the rest of the family doesn't get to eat them they're all mine <laughs> yep sunflowers back there behind them starting to come up a whole bed of sunflowers to feed the chickens yeah See you later, guys. Love you.